Good morning, friends, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending where you are in the world. And welcome to today's uh, Cichlids and Coffee. And maybe we should change it to Cichlids and a whole lot more and coffee, because we've, uh, of course, expanded the channel to go way beyond Cichlids. And uh, say good morning, friends. <laughs> At any rate, welcome everybody. Uh, we have folks from all over the, the world, it looks like. And uh, let's see here. Brandon Wood is here. Hey, Brandon. Good to see you, my friend. And John, John Wallace, one of my moderators. Big shout out to the uh, best moderators on YouTube. John Wallace, GP, and Denny, and let's see here. Zen Ginger, I think, is also, I think. Let's see here who's here, and let's give a chance to some other folks to get on before we get rocking and rolling here. Hey, Tabarak Aquatics, hey, fish family. Bees and Haps Forever, how you doing? And Sunder India. Thank you so very much for scheduling this stream an hour early. Thank you for considering my request so very much. Um, well, what happened is the time changed here in America. We have a daylight savings time, and I'm still doing it 11. So in the fall, it's going to be starting uh, at the same time as before. So I have to be honest with you. I can't take credit for that. <laughs> okay. Can someone give Sunder India some help on the deworming of discus? I'm sure somebody in here can help you with that. And uh, let's see here. David Martin got a message retracted and then said, oops, good morning. David, did you think you were writing a note to your girlfriend? Um, <laughs> anybody ever send a text to somebody that uh, was the wrong person? And uh, I've done that. Uh, okay, hey, Cat Sailor. Cat Sailor's here. Vibes Aquatics is here. And uh, GP. Hey, buddy. GP in the house. Ron Foss, Fish Housekeeper. I like that. Fish Housekeeper. Isn't that really what we do? We're just the, we're just sort of like the housekeeping service that arrives, uh, you know, and make sure that things are tidy and except we don't knock on the door and say housekeeping. And let's see here. Zzip is here. Roman is here. And Christy Leva. Christy Leva. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, from L.A. Don't tell me about the weather. It's a little bit uh, overcast here. It was a little cold last night. But it is getting beautiful. We're starting to get a lot of blooms now. But it's not, uh, I'm sure, warm, sunny, and comfortable like you have in L.A. right now. And let's DC's African Cichlids. Peter Cooper is here, and DC's is here. Gyro Hero? If it's Spanish, it's Hero. If not, it's maybe Gyro, Ortega. Thank you. Thank you for that. And uh, Carrie Pitt. Good morning, Carrie. Our Baglio is here. All right. Hey, Frank. Buenos dias, amigo. So, uh, Mr. Rogers, it is a wonderful day in the neighborhood, Mr. Rogers, and uh, In the Jeans is here. Hey, Jerry. Good to see you, buddy. Hey, Jerry, come over to Knoxville. End of April, there's going to be a uh, Aquaticon, Aquaticon, I think. End of uh, April in Knoxville. I'm thinking of making a drive. You should come by. I think Denny might go. Denny might be there. Take it easy. Good advice. And that is the name of this person. Take it easy. Mr. Aquatic News is here, and so is David Martin. Cole and Rosie and so many other wonderful people. Yeah, we have we really have the best uh the best crowd on YouTube, I think. You really treat each other well. You know, you never tell anybody that that's a stupid question. You all jump in and help each other, and I love it. So um Big shout out, real big shout out to um, what's been going on with the pay, with the Patreon uh, situation. <clears throat> the Patreon numbers continue to grow, and this is a, a way you can support the channel. You can support the channel with uh, 
uh, by viewing and giving the, giving the videos a thumbs up and, and subscribing and turning on notifications. That's, that's the number one way to support the channel. Uh, you can also do super chats. Uh, you can also become a Patreon, which starts as low as, um, as three bucks. But we've had some uh, brand new Patreons uh, jump in. Uh, Gene, uh, Drew, Brian, James, Sam, and Brandon uh, are all uh, have all jumped into the Patreon uh, game here, and it really, really does help. I thank all of you. A big shout out to you folks, and it really does help. I mean, you would think, well, gee, what can three dollars a month do? But if a lot of you jump in at that level, all of a sudden, I can upgrade a computer, or I can, uh, you know, fix a camera, or or I can go to Knoxville, stuff like that. And so it really does, it really does help. So big shout out to the Patreon members who have done that, and um, and also uh, for those of you who would like to support the channel, you can also visit the Teespring. Uh, it's it's under every one of my videos is Teespring. You can pick up uh, coffee mugs and and shirts and hoodies and and uh, all kinds of stuff there. I'm still trying to come up with a hat. If one of you can come up with a hat design, send it over to me. Maybe I'll use it. The logos that I use are all from you folks. I mean, they're all designs that you folks did and sent to me, and I ended up using them. Also, uh, consider using the Amazon link when you shop at Amazon. Amazon.com slash shop slash Ben Ochart. It gets you to Amazon just like regular like you would get there regularly. But if you get there using my link, anything you buy on Amazon gives a credit to the channel. It doesn't cost you a penny more. So consider doing that as well. And of course, while you're there, drop by my Amazon store where I have a lot of uh, fish-related products that I recommend. So uh, that's the commercial. That's the end of the commercial. Now, why didn't you see the normal um, water flow this morning? The uh, The flow of the of the tide and uh, why didn't I do that little dropping, uh, you know, normally the dropping logo? Well, guess what? Uh, there was an update with OBS, which is the software platform I use for doing my live streams. And um, when, they, when this update occurred, all the links to all of my photos and short videos, all those links, links were lost. And, uh, it's been that kind of a week. It's been that kind of a week for me. You notice I only released one video. I had a uh, video that disappeared right in the middle of editing. I couldn't find it anywhere. And then I had another video that I couldn't get the sound and the video to sync up. It was a, um, I may have to do it again. We'll see. I'm still working on it. It was a, a one hour interview with the, uh, with two representatives from the company, Sarah. And that's what got me thinking about today's uh, video topic. If you're not familiar with Sarah, Sarah is a very high quality product out of Germany. This is uh, one of their products. And um, I, I had this one about an hour discussion with Sarah and Frank and Klaus from Sarah. and. I'll tell you, it, it was it it was eye opening. Uh, you know, you you think you think you know something, and then all of a sudden, you get a whole bunch of other information, and it was just absolutely fascinating. And b by the way, uh, John, you're right. Software updates they drive my wife crazy. She's an online tutor. And she has a tremendous amount of information and files that she refers to while tutoring. And sometimes during these these updates, she loses all these links as well. And it's just a nightmare. There's got to be a way to, to, to do it. I mean, I, I know just enough about computers to get in trouble. So, <laughs> so at any rate, uh, thank you, Brett. I appreciate that. Says that he will join up. He'll become part of the garage gang. That's like the garage gang. <laughs> you know, my videos used to get flagged because they had the word gang in them. They used to get a flag from uh, from YouTube. Does this contain gang information? <laughs> I say, yeah, we're really, uh, uh, we're going to go out there and uh, really create some, uh, some mayhem. We're going to go ahead and, and uh, do a water change. 
and, you know, hide the kids. Unusual Aquarium Ecosystems. Man, that's a great name. So um, I'm talking to these guys, and they say some things that are really, really interesting. When you're looking at uh, the breaking down of food as it goes, you know, the, the uh, sort of bioavailability, if you will, like how much, how much of the food is being used by these, by these fish to, to produce energy and, and to be active and, and how much is really going through their body as just fillers and waste. Now, Sarah, apparently about four years ago, stopped using all dyes, all preservatives. Uh, there's nothing uh, naturally, uh, natural, that isn't natural, in their food that can't be easily digested. They've also stopped using all soy products because of the, um, because they include estrogen in soy. Now, I don't know, does that, would that have an effect on your fish? Where a um, where it could mimic the the fear gnomes, you know, the hormone and fear gnome activity in the tank, and make make it seem like there's a female when there isn't. And would that be a bad thing? Because would it be firing up males and and making them more colorful and into their breeding dress, or would it create uh, a lot of antagonism because people feel now they have to fight to be, uh, you know, the the, the alpha dog. And, and be the one most most likely to be selected for breeding, uh, for mating. So all the soy is out of their food. They also say that their food has uh, an 85% digestibility. Now, how can they make claims like that? How, how, do, you, how do you know that, right? And uh, they have a lab. They have a lab that's been operating for 40 years with hundreds and hundreds of fingerlings that they're growing these fish out, they're feeding them uh, different ways, uh, different times of day, they're, they're weighing them, they're taking blood samples, and, and they, they have what is probably, perhaps comparable to what you would see in marine biology, uh, like at marine biology aquariums, you know, they, they have like doctors on staff. They have, they have a large number of staff, uh, a very large number of staff. And it started, it started uh, with uh, the owner of the company in, in, in his teens jumping into a local river and, and capturing worms that he would then sell to fish keepers and then coming up with a way of, of drying the worms that would uh, maintain the nutritional value. And this is like a teenager in Germany. And then one thing led to another, and now they've got like hundreds of staff and all kinds of crazy stuff. And uh, Michael, yeah, I'm glad, Michael Evans, I'm glad, I'm glad you could be here. I'm glad you could catch it. So, so one thing led to the next, and they formed this company called Sarah. Now, in in the past, I, I, my consideration about Sarah Food is that I'd, I'd I'd pick up a jar and I'd get I, I'd get sticker shock because it was very expensive. Apparently, over the years, it it's actually come down in price. Now, you can't compare fish food ounce to ounce because you have to consider uh, the the bioavailability of like how much of this fish food is filler. Uh, soy, grain, uh, you know, and junk that really is not going to help the fish. How much of that is that kind of stuff and is really just going to end up as waste, as waste in the aquarium? A couple interesting things that came up. One was when you have finally weaned the fish over, when you have them on a Sarah diet, they don't get long. Uh, long, goopy, stringy. They don't get long poops. The poops are very 
concentrated. They're sort of chunky and short and break off. And uh, he, he, and he said that was a positive thing, that things were being digested correctly. And apparently if you see one of your fish with a very long, stringy poop, that's apparently not necessarily a good thing. Could be an indicator of uh, possibly of parasites, not always. But one thing. Now, the thing that really... The thing that really blew me away in the discussion is the relationship between, and I'm going to be, and I, and I always give you folks information and, and I get blamed at, the, at, at home all the time of, of, spoiling, of spoiling TV shows and movies and things like that, you know, and I start to talk about a show that I saw or a movie and everybody goes, shut up, shut up, you're going to spoil it. I do that with my channel too. You know, when, when you folks show up to these live streams, I go ahead and I give you a spoiler alert. Uh, there's a relationship between what we're feeding our fish and uh, phosphates. And of course, that relates to brown algae. And how many times have I read a comment, received an email, had someone reach out to me and say, I, I, can't, I can't figure out why, no matter what I do, I've taken everything out, I've, I've, I've used hydrogen peroxide, I've, I've, I've fed less, I've added, I'm, I'm doing less light, more light, I've tried everything, and I still have brown algae. Well, what if, what if you found what if you found out that the food that you're dumping into the tank all the time is actually adding phosphates and these phosphates are, are helping to bring about brown algae. Now he mentioned in the discussion that, that Sarah is at the very bottom. You can't produce food without some phosphate apparently. Apparently, it's, it's going to be present um, in all foods. But he said that the Sarah foods, because they, the way they source the food, the way they blend it and, you know, concentrate it, and, and it's a very difficult process because you have to start, you have to start with a very clean product and you have to you have to walk it through the entire process, make sure it doesn't get contaminated, make sure it's fresh, uh, and, and make sure it's, it's super ground down, super ground down, so that, uh, so that the, the nutrients are readily and very, very available. And, and what you end up with is a 1%, a 1%, uh, like a total of 1% max, or maybe it's 0.01%. It's like the lowest in the industry of phosphates in, in, in their food. So if you're having a brown algae issue that you just can't get rid of, interestingly enough, apart from lights and volume of food and the cleaning and everything else that you're doing, step back and, and, and look at the food that you're using. Your food... If it's not a, of a very very high grade, is quite possibly contributing to your phosphate issue. And so, on the one hand, you're trying to eliminate brown algae. On the other hand, you may be actually uh, feeding it and 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 help helping it helping it to grow and populate in your tank by pro providing it with necessary nutrients. So, so I was very impressed, 40 years of laboratory research, thousands and thousands of fish that have been studied before and after, and now they have uh, a lot more than just food. They have, uh, they have filtration, it's like an old school, old school uh, filter. You need an air pump for that, of course. They have um, filter media. They sent me like this big box of stuff, and uh, anyway, we can we can play a game if you like. If if you have, I'll tell you what. If you if you're uh, 
if you're today's biggest super chat, if you're the biggest super chat today, I'm going to send you, I'm going to send you some bags. I'm going to send you some bags of, uh, of Sarah and you can try it out. Just my way of saying thank you to the, the top super chatter. I've got, I've got community, community food. I've got, uh, cichlid samples. I have, uh, Pleco. I have probiotic foods. I have just a whole variety of things. So uh, anyway, we'll make a game out of it. If, if you're the if you're today's biggest super chatter, and I don't care if it's a dollar or or a thousand dollars, I don't. It, you'll you'll get you'll get a uh, you'll get some some food just as a we'll just play it and uh, play a game. Now I'm going to share something else with you. Very interesting from the talk. Again, spoiler alert, but if you, if, if um, you look at uh, the, the waste that occurs at, by, by, having, by having food go through the system and produce no very little value, let's say 30, 40 percent bioavailability versus 85 percent. So you can essentially feed a lot less. And, and still end up with a very healthy fish. So when you figure that into the cost, then you figure that into maintenance. What is that going to do? If you could feed less, what would you, what would you have with regards to water changes, uh, with regards to filter maintenance, uh, nitrate levels, right, things of this nature, if you could feed less but yet get the same nutritional quality? Now, one thing to consider, he said that some foods will make your fish look plump. But when they do a uh, when they do an autopsy on that fish, they discover that there's a lot of fat around the liver. And what you had was not a healthy fish, but you had an obese fish. And that fish, though it looked plump and might even have had good color because there were coloring agents in the food, right? That fish may have actually not been that healthy. So what he said is that most food companies will test the food up to the point of do they do they eat it? And do they get good color? Are they active? Do they seem okay? He said that's that's the point at which they test the food. He said that Sarah goes way past that. What is it doing to the liver? What is it doing to the um, to the size of the of a fry? Like when they, when they when they spawn, how much fry are we getting, and how viable are those fry to the ones that are fed Sarah versus not fed Sarah? And so when they do those autopsies, they don't find the fat around <clears throat> around the liver. So a person looks at your fish and goes, "Gee, your fish looks a little thin to me." Uh, you may actually have a healthier fish than their fat fish, than their like plump looking fish, because their fish has a bunch of fat around the liver and is actually not going to live that long. And uh, so just all these different interesting things to consider. And there's sort of a, a bit of a triangular relationship between uh, maintenance, right? You, more like a rectangular relationship. But you have maintenance, filtration, the contents of your food, the waste in your tank, the amount of maintenance needed. It's, it's very much a fluid situation. All these factors are pushing and pulling on each other. And as fish keepers, we're, we're trying to come up with the best budget and, at the, and the best quality. We don't want to just, just go crazy and go over our budget and end up not being able to afford the, the hobby. So... But if you take these these factors into consideration, the fish will be healthier. Uh, they'll they'll uh, you'll produce less waste. You can feed less, and uh, also the way the fish the way the way they the way they they produce the food it breaks down. So you don't need to pre soak. He says you don't need to pre soak the pellets because they break down immediately once they're in the fish's mouth because they're micro they're ground down into micro parts and then combined so they 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 quickly quickly dissolve 
and 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 get taken up by the intestinal tract. So you don't need to do pre-soaking, which if you pre-soak, you know that some of that food is just is just turning into cloud, into just cloudiness, and then just disappearing and, and, and dissolving into small microparticles that the fish don't even go after. They just get sucked up by the filter. So <clears throat> just a lot of a lot of different a lot of different moving parts, a lot of things to consider in this in this filtration, uh, brown algae, a uh, food, you know, sort of combination. Now it looks like somebody dropped a super chat here. Let me see who that was. Tabaric Aquatics. Hey, Tabaric, I did, I did do that. People sometimes will will throw a comment at me. Hey, check out my channel. I don't know if they ever expect expect anyone to respond to that kind of stuff, but. I do. <laughs> when I can, when I can, I tr I try and respond as much as I can. But this last week, for example, I was uh, I was just overwhelmed between trying to get content together and having these things occur, like an edited video disappear, and and uh, and I'm sure there's something I'm doing, and I'm sure I'm probably gonna have to upgrade some of the memory and things of this nature. I mean, th this computer is very powerful. Right now, for example, in this live stream, for those of you that know computers, my CPU, my CPU usage right now in this live stream is 1.9%. So I have a very powerful, a very powerful computer, but video is extremely taxing on computers, especially if you're in HD or 4K. It really, really sucks up resources. So anyway, so let's take a look at at uh, some of the things you have to say. I'm I'm uh, I'm excited about this. I'm going to try and salvage. I really I really don't want to bother Klaus and Frank over at Sarah one more time and say, look, we have to redo the interview. I use Zoom. For those of you familiar with Zoom, the recording that I ended up getting from Zoom was so choppy. And and uh, and video and and audio were not synced at, at times, and and sometimes anyway, it, it, it's just a real dumpster fire. And I'm gonna try and work on it and fix it, but uh, we will we will see, we will see. So let's see, let's see what you you folks have to say, and uh, it looks like what we have nine ninety one. 91 folks on. That's that's not bad. All right, let's take a look here. I'm going to look at your your questions here. Oh, someone dropped someone dropped a super chat. Hey Amber. Amber Key, game on. <laughs> if you are the top super chatter today, uh please be sure to uh Please be sure to send me your full mailing address, even if you sent it to me before, because it's probably 2,000 pages back in my email. Send it to ben.o.cichlid at gmail.com. Now, a uh, quick update, by the way. Uh, I think I'm going to be going with a, a DIY 55-gallon 55 gallon DIY sump and either a um, either an ESOP um, an ESOP sump a, a uh, trickle drip type sump system that I have from e from eShop with a uh, overflow box that hangs on the back I'm either going to do that together with the sump or have a or have the 704B canister in with that uh, 55 gallon DIY sump and that'll probably be be the filtration for the 300 gallon I'm looking at the stand and I got it fit I got it positioned I just need to lift the back so I can put some spacers to lift it up just a little bit in the back and it'll be perfectly level I just need to lift up uh, little under a half inch in the back of the stand and I'll, I'll have a perfectly level stand and then it has a leveling pad on it. 
The tank is scheduled for delivery April 16th. April 16th. That's the big day we get the tank. And I've got six people lined up, and we're going to have 12 of those heavy-duty suction cups that you that you that you dial down with the big handles and we're, we're gonna we only need to bring he's gonna back the van right up to the garage and then we just need to move it from the van onto the stand like 10 feet six people 850 pounds one it's got three quarter inch glass seven feet across right and i think like a yard at least three feet from front to back and and so uh it's gonna take six of us we're gonna we're gonna bring it in hold it over the stand and then when it's over the stand someone's gonna slide in the pad i'm gonna need a seventh person they're gonna slide that pad in and then we're gonna drop it gently on the pad if we try and get it onto the stand with the pad on the stand and and we move it the pad just crunches up so it's gonna be quite an adventure so Stay tuned. I'll probably videotape it, and hopefully nobody will get hurt. <laughs> Whoa, game on. Joe Provenzano, he wants a little bit of that Sarah food. All right. Also, if you do have the biggest super chat and you want some of this Sarah food, be sure to send me what kind of fish you have, and I'll try to dial in the best, the best samples for you. Okay, so be sure to send me the, the type of fish that you have. John jumps in just for the heck of it. Thank you, John. <laughs> you guys are great. You guys are really great. You guys and gals are really great. So <clears throat> all right. So let's take a look at some of your questions. And I appreciate those super chats. For those of you that tuned in late, today's biggest super chat is going to get some samples of a very high quality, very highly researched food out of Germany called Sarah. And uh, I would like you to report back to me. Let me know how your fish react. One comment that was made during the interview is that fish will transition easily to Sarah food, which is one of the things that they've noticed in their research. So if you get a fish, they say that sometimes a fish will, will go in stress if you try and change their food. And they said the transition to Sarah was very smooth for most fish. They accept it very, very quickly. They go after it. One other thing that was really interesting to me that was said by Frank, the, the U.S. sales manager for Sarah Foods, he said that in the U.S., uh, well, not necessarily in the U.S., everywhere, actually. He's the U.S. rep. And then I think Klaus works out of Germany but comes over to help out Frank. But the comment he made was, and, and if for those of you who follow the channel, you know that this has been my philosophy for, for some time. And I thought this was very humble, very humble of, of Frank and to say this. And he was, he was just being honest. He said, look. No company, no company has it all figured out. And he said, I do really recommend, I recommend a blend of foods. I recommend variety so you cover all your bases. And I, I, I told him straight out, I said, are you saying, are you saying that people should mix foods that are not Sarah, not produced by Sarah, is that what you're suggesting? And he said, yes. He said, I think that it's a good idea to offer a, a combination, a blend of foods to cover all of the nutritional needs because no one company has, an, has the formula really totally nailed down. Something I've been saying for years, no company has what your fish need. What your fish need might not be what my fish need. There might be certain minerals in this water that are not available in yours, or you have certain minerals in your water that are not available. So mineral supplementation. And one thing that blew me away was, let's look at a couple things here. First of all, 
pull out pull out your food pull out your your uh, your jar of food go ahead and pull it out and let's take a look here let's compare this this is for cichlids keep in mind this is not community fish this is cichlid food i do have some community fish food and it's going to be a little different it's going to be definitely different in its combination but protein 42.5% 42.5%. Now, you might look at that and go, wow, isn't that almost too much? Is that going to require too much? Is that going to create intestinal issues and in trying to uh, digest that level? Not if it's cleanly sourced, correctly prepared. No. As a matter of fact, it's going to be very, very 85% bioavailable. 42%. Crude fat, 6.3. Crude fiber, 4.6. Moisture, 6%. Crude ash, 6.3%. No soy. They've stopped using soy for years now because of the estrogen. It was creating hormonal differences in the fish, so they cut all the soy out. Now, you've heard stories of humans reacting to soy. Now, add into that, and I'm not sure I have, I mean, if you, you might know more about this than I do, but I've heard you can't really even find, not without difficulty, non-genetically modified soy. It's been tampered with uh, genetically, so it's a modified, so I don't know if that, I don't know what your thoughts are on that or not, but he said no soy, no soy in their food, and the level of ash, you find ash in almost everything that's dry, is, is non, almost non-existent. These are slowly sinking pellets. They contain omega, and they contain green-lipped mussel, a little bit of brewer's yeast, a special kind of algae as the binding agent, and garlic. So they use algae to bind it. They're not using wheat, right? You don't see these, these uh, fish lining up to get frosted flakes. They, so there's none of that. Now, check out the vitamins. Vitamin A, 3,600. Vitamin D, 60, 680 IU, vitamin E, vitamin B, different kinds of vitamin B, a stabilized vitamin C. Anyway, he says the vitamins that they include in their food is outrageous, and nobody touches them in the industry. So um, I'm telling you, if, if you were to mix this, with, um, in my opinion, it's my opinion. You mix this with extreme and some Pystein energetics. And once a week, you throw a little bit of frozen krill or maybe some, uh, some cichlid delight with some garlic in it. You're going to have some super fish, super fish. They're going to live a long time. They're going to be extremely, extremely healthy. And, uh, whoa, someone else jumped in. What's going on here? We have a, we have a, uh, an auction going on. Peas and haps forever. I think you're the leader of peas and haps forever. <laughs> Biggest super chat gets, uh, some Sarah food. Be sure to send me your complete mailing address and the type of fish that you have, please. And I will go ahead and uh, package that up and send it to you. I don't know. Is anybody going to beat Peas and Haps forever? We'll see. We'll see. Thank you, everybody, for those super chats. Now, let's take a look at what questions that you have here. Jerry says Extreme does not have soy. I love Extreme. I For two reasons. One, the Results that I've directly observed, one. Two, when I saw the video of the, the fish farm 
that the that the maker of extreme has and i saw those fish i kid you not he pulled a a bucochromus notatania out of a tank and i thought it was a saltwater fish out of a out of a tub i thought it was a saltwater fish and then he held it to the camera and you could tell it was a bucochromus notatania and he showed the big the mush that he would make and then he would turn that mush that's the mush that ended up becoming the pellets and the flakes so yeah i'm a big believer in extreme uh and i after talking with the owner and i think one of you shared the uh, master the food master class uh after talking with the owner of piscine energetics up in canada i was very very impressed by their commitment to um, going from the raw product, the, the small shrimp-like products, right? Uh, taking that over to a dry or to a frozen and, and the steps that they've taken to make sure that the mineral and vitamin, that the, that the, that the quality of nutrition stays uh, intact, what they've done is phenomenal. And I don't know if they have it patented or what they what they've done, but but yeah, Pisces Energetics Extreme and Sarah, forty years of scientific uh, research. They've got some uh, catfish food. I'm sure if you can see that with the plastic over it, they've got uh, some community food called growth. So you probably give this to your little peewees. All kinds of other stuff. This this is a uh, what this is what I thought at first was just uh, ceramic, and they said no, it's not ceramic. This is made of glass, biofilter medium. And if you go to the Sarah website, the Germany Sarah website, you'll see that they have uh, aquariums, they have meds, they have filters, they have everything everything i knew them only as food i'd walk into the fish store and i'd see the sarah food stand you know and then i'd look at the price and I'd put it back down <laughs> but the price has come down it's come down a bit and when you figure you can feed less it's actually he says it's actually comparable and your fish win so at any rate let's see your questions John Wallace masterclass video series was an eye opener for me on the way fish food is processed. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, Reef and Sea Forever, yes, they told me that, uh, of course, in Germany, that they would be very, very large, uh, a very large presence, but also throughout, throughout Europe. Italy, he said, was a big uh, Italy fish keepers. Uh, of course, France, England, UK, uh, they're very big there. And uh, now they're starting to move aggressively in the United States. So you're gonna start seeing them uh, appear more and more. So, so let's take a look here. Hey Brett, I missed your comment originally. Hello to you over in Fort St. John, British Columbia, Canada. Very, very cool. We have a pretty good, uh, a good presence up in Canada. I've been to Canada, beautiful country up in the, in the wilds of Vancouver, outside of the city, way outside of the city, four hours out of the city. All right, let's see here. Rosie, thank you so much for that. I appreciate that. Talked about how much she's learned. Brandon Wood, I need some quick help before I run to the fish store. Need to raise my pH from 7.4 to 8.2 in a 75-gallon haps and peacock tank. Tap water, KH4, DKH, how much base rock should I buy? 75 gallon? Well, first of all, I think it's a very good idea, Brandon, that you're using uh, something natural, like rock. Limestone works. Limestone is good. 
and I imagine um, 75 gallon. I guess it would, it would, if you're going to put it directly in the tank, or you're going to put it in a sump, or you're going to put it in the filter, different ways to go. Uh, crushed coral, aragonite, limestone, all those are, are very, very good and will, will help to uh, bring things up on a gradual basis. Now keep in mind that uh, as it brings it up, you may be counteracting depending on the pH coming out of your tap. So you may want to consider more frequent water changes that are less percentage. Perhaps instead of doing 80% water changes, maybe do two or three 20% water changes a week and maybe just allow things to kind of let, let, let the minerals that aragonite or crushed coral and limestone release into the water. Let those minerals go ahead and start to get released and try not to like abruptly shock the fish with a, um, with a large water change. Now, if you do come across a situation where you feel you need a large water change, consider, and you do have a, a, a and you have raised the tank pH, but your tap is still a bit low. You might, uh, consider trickling. I know it takes a long time, but do it, do a trickle to refill the tank. You can also uh, fill up a tub. I go buy just a cheap, one of those big tubs you can buy at any hardware store. Throw a whole bunch of aragonite and crushed coral and limestone in there and fill up that tub and maybe use that uh, as some of, your, some of the water that you use in water changes. Maybe throw a... Uh, Maybe throw a couple, a couple pathos uh, uh, plants, let, them, let, let some plants grow in there a little bit. And uh, you can turn that tub into something kind of nice, actually. But anyway, anybody else want to jump into that conversation? Uh, Brandon Wood, what do, you, what do you suggest? What do you suggest Brandon do to uh, raise that pH? All right, let's see what else we got here. David Martin, Ben, I seriously need to find a good place to buy a couple 220-gallon tanks. I have five 125-gallon tanks, two 75 tanks, and a 65-gallon tank, and a 60-gallon tank. Yeah, you don't have enough tanks, David. Uh, you, David, you need at least five more tanks, minimum. What you have, David, is a thing called uh, multiple tank syndrome. There's no cure for it. It is it it there's it's, it's uncurable, and so, uh, your cope the only way to cope with it is to get more tanks. And you're doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. You're getting more tanks. The, uh, you know, my friends over at Glass Cages. I think Glass Cages makes a tremendous tank. Uh, they're going over to that uh, that sapphire glass, which is even more even more transparent than low iron. On the bigger tanks, they use three quarter inch, and they euro brace it on the bottom, and they brace the corners, they brace the top. Uh, the Cichlid Shack just ordered like like a hundred seventy five gallon tanks. I forget how many, and. And James told me these tanks are battleships. The tanks are like, they're literally like military tanks. I mean, he said they're just, they're heavy, probably twice as heavy. And uh, they're, they're just, I mean, that, the, the 300 gallon that's being delivered to my house is estimated at 850 pounds because they use more glass there is more silicone square inch because of the euro bracing that goes along the bottom and the corner strips that are placed in after they've after the tank is dried they put these corner these triangular long rods in the corners you end up with more square inches of silicone 
If you're somebody who's doing big water changes, you're constantly stressing your silicone, right? You're dropping the water, silicone goes, goes, put, comes in, goes out, comes in, goes out, comes in, goes out. You could have a failure if you had a tank like one of these, quarter-inch glass, right, with, with the thinnest of silicone layers, right? These Aquion, Aquion tanks, they're holding together okay. They're not going to last 20 years. So um, when I was talking to James, I mean, James thought that uh, a tank like that, he's never going to have to replace them. Those tanks are probably never going to have to be replaced. Whereas the normal thinking is, if you have a tank, if you buy a used tank, or if you have a tank and you've had it for 10 years, you need to consider a reseal because there are going to be some weak spots that will go. And they'll probably go while you're on vacation. So <laughs> Murphy's Law. If you're going to have a leak, it's going to happen when you're away for two days. So um, glass cages would be my number one pick only because of the quality that I've seen. I've got two here, this one and the 90-gallon. And, I mean, that 90-gallon rimless is just amazing. And, uh, but there's other folks out there, other folks out there that you can check with. I mean, I wouldn't suggest, I wouldn't suggest Marine Land only because I've heard that Marine Land on their larger tanks have had issues. Maybe they've resolved that. I don't know. But you start getting into some of these larger tanks, the amount of pressure is unbelievable on the amount of weight. So you can't do what you're doing with your 55 gallons with your 300 and think that that's going to be just as strong. You've got to do all kinds of special bracing. And some of these companies don't do that. So glass cages would be my, my uh, first pick. I'm a little biased. I like those guys a lot. And they've done good by me. They've... they've uh, They've given me some good deals. DC, uh, DCs and uh, they, they helped out James, uh, you know, gave him a, a, a great, just a great lot of aquariums. Someone is asking about my Fusco. How big is the Fusco? Let's see. Where is he? There he is. I'd say he's about six inches, maybe. This goes about six. Sprout's about nine, eight or nine. This little guy here, this bicolor 500, he's pretty much maxed out. Bicolor 500s go, go to about five or six inches. They don't get that big. The uh, Buca Chromis, they'll, they'll get huge. I think this... Auto Fairnix Tetra Stigma is kind of maxed out. Water splashing here. These guys splash like crazy when I feed them. I've got to move the water, the food away because they'll get water inside of the uh, dry food, and that's the kiss of death for your food. It starts to get moldy and moist and horrible. So, uh, hope that answered your question. Ranky Fingers is here. Like a mafia name, Frankie Fingers. I used to have a gar, only had one eye. It was called One Eye Gar, the Gar. Johnny One Eye, I think we called him. It was a mafia name. Let's see here. Craig over in Melbourne, Australia. Hey, Craig. I'm looking at your comments. That's what I'm scanning through here. Roman, can you explain why fish, why fish get fish rot so easily to get? Um, Roman, unless you imported fish that already had it, it shouldn't be that easy to get. So um, I'm going to give you some tough love. Let's take an honest look at, at, at what you're doing. It's the hardest place to look, and it's the only place I've ever learned 
It's where I've learned the most. I'm not going to say the only place I've ever learned. It's where I've learned the most. When something is going on in my tank to look at what I'm doing, what I did, what I didn't do, what I should have done, let's look at, 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 at the husbandry, how you're caring for the fish. And because fish rot should be very, very, um, very unusual. We have to look at water conditions. We have to look at, I mean, if you're testing your water, what are your test results? Uh, how much waste have, you know, are you checking under decor? Are you moving out decor to look, because very often you get these massive waste deposits under decor. But even that waste can neutralize and become inert over time. So there, there's something going on and Maybe you're not quarantined. Maybe you're, where you're buying your fish, uh, you bring in a batch. They, they, maybe you're doing a great job and they somehow beat it and they recover. But then you buy more fish from the same place. So you bring it in again uh, because they were, not, they were not quarantined for a period of time. And, and so your fish are now becoming, uh, they're having to struggle too much with it. They're starting to become a little bit stressed in their immune system. You might want to consider a uh, a a food, a probiotic. They have they have probiotic foods. Sarah isn't the only one. Cobalt, uh, maybe. Uh, I mean, just about everybody out there. They have these these uh, probiotic food. Consider some maybe some probiotic food that uh, apparently helps with. With also with slime coat and intestinal lining to maximize. See, what the probiotic will do is it, it adds good bacteria, good bacteria to the fish. So the fish can then, that bacteria is what, what then pulls the nutrients from the food. So look at uh, adding perhaps a, a, a probiotic food and, uh, and really look at your schedule. Make sure that your that that your maintenance now don't go way overboard because then you'll have other problems, right? Remember what I talked about in the beginning of the video, all these moving parts, right? You can't, oh, well, I watched Ben on a video, so I'm gonna I'm gonna lower the water line down 90%. I'm gonna clean out all the filters and I'm gonna do a deep, deep substrate, you know, deep vacuuming, and and all your fish will die within 72 hours because you'll kill off all the beneficial bacteria. So uh, one step at a time. And uh, let's make sure that you're on schedule with, you know, the cleaning of your filters. Make sure you're doing your water changes. Maybe increase your water change, either percentage or frequency. And so, and you'll get it. And, and don't allow any fish, any fish to get into your tank without a one-month quarantine. And uh, you should be okay. You should be okay. All right. Let's go on here. Anybody else? Uh, Mr. Rogers, no, I have not worked with uh, with uh, plenums or anoxic, even though I do operate off of a deep substrate that I leave undisturbed. I do not stir this substrate up. It is four inches, maybe five in some parts. I leave it alone off of the philosophy that it is harboring uh, anaerobic bacteria. So I don't touch it and I use it. I use it as a the same way you would use ceramic rings in a filter. That's how I use my substrate. Am I going to be getting sulfuric gas that's going to kill all my fish? I have heard that's an urban legend, and if a factor, mostly a factor in salt water, not in fresh. So I'm not worried about gas pockets, and uh, I don't vacuum this tank. I don't put. I don't put... I just don't vacuum it. I vacuum the white substrate tanks only because for aesthetic purposes. But otherwise, I don't. I let the I let the power head, which is not a power head; it's a wave maker. I let the wave maker blow the the waste up, and then go ahead and let the filters do their job. So the the wave maker. There's a video I released a long time ago where I talked about using wave makers and power heads as 
a way to vacuum your tank by by moving the waste into the intakes and not having to vacuum. Now, if I move one of these caves or I pick up one of the plants and I notice that a lot of gunk has has collected under it, which can happen sometimes. It doesn't matter how deep you push the decor into the sand. Somehow, waste will wiggle its way in there. Uh, I, might, I might stick a hose down there, right? Maybe twice a year and scoop up some of that junk, maybe. So, anyway. Whoa, it looks like somebody just took the lead. What do we have here? This is going to be tough to beat. Uh, maybe, maybe not, but Vibes Aquatics. Thanks, bro, for all you'll do for the community. Legit fish food from Aquapros. I'm not familiar with the food from Aquapros. I, I'm not, so I really can't comment on that. But, um, but you are going to be, unless somebody beats you, you're going to be getting some, uh, some Sarah, and I want you to tell me what you think about it. All right, so let's see here. Amber Key, I thought the game was over. It's not over until, until the fat guy doing the live stream sings, but I'm not going to sing. <laughs> oh, that's funny. So let's see here. Wait a minute. Oh, wait, I think Peas and Haps Forever just took the lead because they added a second, a second super chat, which brings their total one cent ahead, one penny. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You're out of control. I love it. All right. Oh, Peas and Haps Forever is playing for blood. Frankie Fingers, I gravel back every water change. I used to do that too, especially when I had uh, loose gravel or when I was using uh, crushed coral. That was The pieces were relatively big, like shells and pieces of coral. I was using that as a substrate in California. And a lot of waste would get down in there. And uh, so I would do a very deep... A deep vacuuming. I would do a deep vacuuming in there. And uh, every time. All righty. Mohammed Hisham. His, his ham? Mohammed Hisham. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, my friend. I was thinking of buying one more canister filter to add up to my sump. Thank God now I can save that money. Well, yeah, I mean, you've got, you've got a figure. I mean, do you need it? Number, do you need it, first of all? In all honesty, I could probably take the FX6 off of this tank, especially if you saw my video. I think it was called I Was Shocked. And in that video, I I show you the uh, what happened when I opened up when I opened up peas and haps forever's latest <laughs> peas and haps forever is is uh, is piling on now <laughs> and laughing. I'm laughing with you. So uh, when I opened up that that filter, one of you want to share that link to that video? The uh, I was shocked video. The uh, Oh, Joe comes in strong. <laughs> What's happening here? Okay. So, kind of like lost for words here. Right? You, you, you kind of, you, you broke my con, you, you, you broke me. I'm, I'm broken now. So, <laughs> so let's take a look at this for a second. I, if I take off that FX6, which was very, very clean, and uh, would things be okay? They might. They might be okay. They might be okay. So uh, 
But if you have a healthy system, if, if the fish are, are, are looking good and they're, they're, they're doing fine, why? Why change anything? And, and that's one question that I would have, have for you, Mohammed. How are the fish doing? How are the fish doing? If, the, if they're looking great. Now, if you're about to add, if you want to add, if you have on your bucket list another 10 or 15 cichlids that you want to add, you might want to create a little more water turnover, a little more water polishing, and you can accomplish that. You can add a canister and have it be all sponges and just use it as a super water polisher. That could work. That could work. Now, so, I'm trying to keep up here with the, with the uh, super chat. You guys are really, really kind of shocking me here. And I really appreciate it. You, you are the best. You're just the best. Whenever there's, there's something like this, the way you, you all step up and, and jump in. I just love it. I just love it. Yeah, and that is, you know, it, it, that is a problem, Mohammed. In some countries, you just can't get some of these products. Uh, when I was talking to the folks at Sarah, we we were talking about the uh, the availability of medication for fish. They have a a very extensive medication line. But some of these are just prohibited. They can't distribute them in certain countries. Uh, even Europe is clamping down now. And a while back, Corey over at the Aquarium Co-op did a whole a talk on how, um, and, and this was also based on a talk that I attended, a live talk that he gave over in Anaheim, California, on how we might get to a point where the only thing we're left with is salt, where salt might be the only way we can treat our tanks because they're going to start pulling more and more of these, uh, the, the stronger the stronger antibiotics are going to get pulled off the shelves. Now, is it because they think people will abuse them? Or is it because of other factors that are profit-motivated? Uh, certain companies want to control uh, the flow of drugs. Uh, I don't know. It just depends on how suspicious you are about motives, how suspicious you are about... Uh, what people will do for money, and uh, I happen to be rather suspicious. <laughs> for those of you who watch my video about test kits, water test kits, and how I kept getting high results with API master test kits, and I finally said, you know what? I think API just wants me to buy a whole bunch of water conditioner because they're night they're they're my nitrates with API are always high. And everybody else, they're okay. So I think API just wanted me to buy a bunch of... <laughs> oh, all right. So let's see. Anything else you folks would like to say? Comments? Thank you, Vibes Aquatics. Thank you so much, my friend, and uh, for coming in there. And Joe, you, Joe, you're blowing me away, buddy. Blowing me away. Peas and haps. You're killing me. You left me speechless. And anyone who knows me knows how hard that is. And uh, vibes again. Peas and haps again. Amazing. And uh, absolutely incredible. Thank you, Fish Ranch. Thank you for that. And the... Um, I would I would have to leave the uh, I'd have to leave the live stream to get you that 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 link. If you just if you just search Sarah S E R A Sarah, uh, and then you'll see several things come up, and some of it will be links to what is being sold at Amazon, Petco, blah 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 blah. But go to the one that I think has has a, a European ending instead of com dot com. It's D E I think. Dot .de or dk I, it's a different ending and that's their store and it's a great it's a great store you'll see tanks uh, equipment uh, meds 
Uh, you'll read about their philosophy, uh, their scientific approach, a little bit about the country. You'll see their building, which is actually very cool. They have a very cool looking building and uh, from very humble beginnings. Somebody jumping into a lake and, uh, and, and, and getting some worms as a teenager, selling them, and then figuring, figuring out how to dry them to maintain nutritional quality. And then hundreds of staff, presence all around the, all around the country, all around the world. And uh, it, it's just a very cool, cool story. And I liked it. And I'm hoping I can put that interview together. For those of you who like that kind of thing, you know, I was surprised that the master class, when I did the interview with Pisces Energetics, I'm surprised that, in, now granted, the videos were long. I mean, they were like half hour videos, one hour video. They were long videos. But uh, for those of you who like that kind of uh, drilling down, getting into the deep science of, of things, and I mean, who would think that, that they were helping the brown algae with the food they were using? I mean, who would think that? Who would think that, that the reason that the hydrogen peroxide and the, the water changes and pulling out the decor and scrubbing them down and, and then brown algae's back in a month, who would think that it was the food that was, made, that was contributing to that? Then you find out that Sarah, because for no other reason than the fact that they source and monitor the clean ingredients all the way through the process, they have a low phosphate. So if a food has a high phosphate, what does that tell you? about how they're sourcing and monitoring the, the processing. So anyway, a lot of things to consider here. And uh, I think we had another, uh, another super chat hit the, uh, hit the <laughs> John Wallace. <laughs> did John, did you jump in again? Was that the one I saw before? Vibes Aquatic. Thank you, my friend. Vibes Aquatics came in. All right. All right, my friends. So I think we're on the hour. Do you have any other pressing questions that you want to ask before we wrap this thing up? And I am just, I'm just blown away. I'm just blown away by your, your generosity and your help. And uh, anyone, anyone today, uh, if, if, you, if you broke, I don't even know how to do this because some of you are just way up there, but I'll tell you what, if you broke, if you broke 50 bucks, if your super chat is over 50 bucks, Send me, your, send me your mailing address. I'm going to get you some Sarah products. Tell me what kind of fish you have. If, you, if your super chat was over 50 bucks, give me your mailing information. And uh, $50 US. I don't care where you are in the world. Uh, I'll ship it to you. And uh, so in some cases, I'll be probably paying more in shipping than you. <laughs> My wife says I'm crazy when I do that. Wherever you are, I'll ship you some Sarah product. Uh, if you're over $50 US, I'll send it to you. All right? So with that being said, uh, let's see. Mohammed, I hope you got your question answered there. Uh, to Bark Aquatics, I use phosphate pads from Aquarium Co-op. Yes, there are phosphate pads. There are also ammonia pads. There's nitrate pads. Now, those things do wear out over time. So again, if, if you're getting a lot of phosphates from your tap, you're probably going to always have to be replacing those pads. Uh, if you have very low to zero phosphates out of the tap and you've been feeding a high phosphate food and switch over to Sara, you'll probably be able to wean off of ph phosphate pads because you're, you're starting to put a cleaner product into the aquarium. So just things to monitor. And again, again, we're looking at all the moving parts, right? How it affects filtration, your need to, to maintain the volume of your water changes, how heavily stocked your tank is, how much you're feeding, all these moving parts, it, right? It's a fluid situation. Like it says on the back of my t-shirts that you can get over at Teespring. Cat Sailor, watch for that interview. Watch for the interview. And uh, 
I think you'll like it. I'm going to try and make it to Aquatacon. I think it's Aquatacon in Knoxville. If you can make it to Knoxville for Aquatacon, I think is the name of it. It's going to be at the Knoxville Expo Center. I'm going to try and be there at the end of the month. If you're there, say hi. I'm talking to somebody. Still, come by, stand there, say hi. Don't be shy. Uh, and uh, I will be going to the next. Uh, someone mentioned Aquashella. I'll be going to the Aquashella Orlando. Is going to be my normal, my normal one. We still haven't recovered totally from the uh, fifteen hundred dollars I spent. <laughs> My wife pays the bills. Uh, it's just the arrangement we have. She's always sort of handled the books. I handled them originally, but when I went on the road back in my career days, it was more practical to have her handle the bills, but she still does. And when she saw the American Express bill, uh, she had some questions. <laughs> on that note, I am going to be flying to Arizona and giving you a video tour of the brand new, uh, the brand new uh, facility that James is putting together, and uh, the Cichlid Shack, automated water changes and beautiful racks, and he's got a state of the art uh, these uh, tankless water, advanced water heater systems, uh, humidifiers that are like the kind they use in high-tech computer establishments, dehumidifiers. Uh, anyway, the guy is just not cutting any corners. And I told him, I said, James, I've got to come out there and film that. And so I'm going to be going out there, I suspect, early May. So another exciting trip and video to watch for. So... <clears throat> Unusual aquarium ecosystems. Uh, my wife does not watch the show. <laughs> I wish she did. I really do wish she did. But it's, uh, I'm blessed. She supports me in what I do and, uh, and is very uh, encouraging. And so I am very blessed in that way. So my kids sometimes show up. I think my daughter showed up last week and, uh, was gushing with uh, with how great the channel was. And then I said, wait a minute, that's my daughter. <laughs> All right, my, uh, my friends, thank you so much. I appreciate everything you did today. You have blown me away. And uh, Sean, I, 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 uh, I don't know. I guess I'll try it. <laughs> You've blown me away today. Please send me your, uh, if you did, uh, if you're over 50 and you're, <laughs> I didn't think I'd be saying this. If you're over 50 in your super chat, please send me your full mailing address to ben.o.cichlid. Let me know what kind of fish you have and I'll get you hooked up. Thank you, my friends. Enjoy your weekend. And uh, Brandon, what, 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 Brandon Wood, but that's what I'm asking. How much, what are you, there's a little conversation here. What's going on? All right. Base rock is calcium carbonate. There you go. That'll work. Limestone works too. Limestone's really good. All right. I'm going to get off or else I'm going to get drawn in, drawn in another conversation. We'll be here all weekend. It'll be like one of those old uh, Jerry Lewis. Uh... <laughs> Thank you, my friends. You're the best. And we're going to end off quickly because I don't have that ending video. It's gone. I can't locate it. So uh, see you next week, my friends. You're the best. You rock.